So what I've invented and set up for people is a way to, to increase their productivity and the speed at which they perform the operations that they have to do. Let's say I have to make a hundred of these things. Each one of them will take one, two, three, four, at least four operations plus one equals five. So I've got to do five things. And if I have to hit each one of those stamps four times, five times, then that's 500 operations. After a while you get tired, especially if you have to pull that handle over and over and over and over again. So what this does is this reduces the amount of force required to operate the press and to make an impression. And it doesn't require a lot of space. It doesn't require anything fancy. I'm working on this piece of concrete. When it gets a little bit cooler, uh, I'll go down in the basement and clamp this thing to that, to uh, a tube of six that I have down there. And so it's a process. And what surprised me when I invented it is that pad uh, greatly reduces the amount of force that you have to use. Uh, there were times when I used bargain leather and it was so hard that I had to pretty much hang off this handle in order to make an impression. And the leather had to be pretty much soaked to make it work. It was very hard. And so using this is just the opposite. So here's the process and the tools to increase uh, the speed when you're making various items. And if you're going to set rivets, all you have to do is put the leather, set the rivet in here, and just ease this down on top of it. And the rivet is set with probably three pounds of force doesn't need any more than that and it's set in there you don't have to go any further than that if you pull down too hard you're going to crush the rivet so you have to be a little bit careful what I would do with this machine once you get it is practice just a little bit and find ways to minimize the amount of movement that you're doing if you're picking something up from over here and putting it over there and then putting it back here get things closer together uh, use the same kind of stamp over and over and over again. And then switch to other stamps like letter stamps or other size stamps uh, or even your custom stamps. And that way you can uh, keep from pulling down hard on a stamp like this and then practically nothing for a stamp like this and then resetting it for a stamp like this. You want to do all this size stamp at one time. Then all this size stamp at one time. That way it's not going to be too crazy. And then you want to do this one all at one time so that you're not continually changing the height of your RAM. And that will increase the speed and productivity of what you're doing. Well, if you have any questions, just uh, use the eBay uh, question form, and I'll get the answer back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks a lot. Well, while I'm finishing up one of my own projects, I wanted you to see just how easy it was to use this machine. What this is, is a setup that increases your productivity so that once you get going, you've got uh, rapid one-strike motions. And as you'll notice, it doesn't take anything that's all that uh, fancy or complicated. I'm set out here on the uh, uh, concrete uh, that's on the front porch. And later on when it gets cold, I'll go downstairs in the basement and set up there. So let's see what I've done so far, which is nothing. That's all it takes is that little press downward for this handle. And it makes that kind of an impression. It's real simple. Now as this dries out, the uh, 
leather will get a little bit stiffer and it won't take quite as good an impression so you may actually have to wet it again. The setup consists of a metal plate. All this is is a diamond honing stone. It's a thin steel plate and when you get yours it'll be a uh, 3 by 6 inch iron plate, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. This rubber pad and you make a stack with the leather and the die. I don't need the handle because all I'm doing is that and it's just a very light pull. This is a two ton press, two ton, one ton press and that little pull makes a really decent impression on that. Now later on I'm going to put some uh, letter stamps on this and to do that I take the pad off because the surface area of the stamp is very small. That means it takes almost no pressure at all to make an impression. So what I do is I put my fingers on either side of the ram right here. And I reach down, position the stamp. The reason why I'm doing this is to keep my hand from shaking. Not that it shakes, but you, you try to position this otherwise and maybe kind of hard, but this is more rapid. Let it go. Bring it down. Just a little bit of pressure. A tiny, tiny amount of pressure. I bet it's five pounds. And now you've got a stamp. Very quick. Something else that I do with these stamps is I'll take a black marker and on the top of the stamp I'll mark it right here. That way I don't have to continually look at it which way is up and set it on there and the way it goes. With a custom stamp like this one, this is Delrin, and it's been laser cut on the bottom. And the guy that made this uh, did an exceptionally good job. He tapered uh, the sides here and everything for me. And custom stamps really come in handy. For instance, I want to put Kentucky on this one. So I wrote Kentucky on the face that's up. I set it where I want it. Very little pressure and it's done. I bet I'm not using three pounds to five pounds to make this stamp. And there's the impression at the bottom. Something else that you might want to do is you may think that stamps are always in squared up. on the leather, let's say you're making a belt of some kind, it doesn't have to be like that. You can take this and turn it. So this is where the nose is. I've got it. I've got the nose marked on the side. So you take the nose and turn it down like this. And now you have a different orientation than if it was square like that. Another design that uh, has been discontinued, but you can still get these, are 2D stamps. You'll see that they're outlines and they don't have any uh, three-dimensional form up inside of it. Normally, without the pad, and that took more pressure because I didn't have the pad, what you have is an outline, and that's it. 
put the pad on, make sure the numbers are down. Pull on the ram and it's going to sink in just a little bit. That much. See how it sunk in? That much. And it's done. Again, that's between five and ten pounds. And what it did is it created a contour of the body. It pushed up from behind and created a contour here so that it looks like it has a body on the horse. So what I do is I take this flat and I don't need the contour right here. So I tap it down, this is flat, the body's now rounded, the faces and necks are rounded, I've got a contour. That's something that you don't get with 2D. This is another custom stamp. When they're flat like this, they have to be used in a press. You pound it with a hammer and you're going to really mess it up. This one. Can you tell them on a major round? <laughs> this one. Uh, if it presses up into this, it doesn't really produce that good or that nice and uh, or that attractive an impression. So I've positioned it the way I'd like to have it. And press. And they have a feathered horse shape. It's kind of nice. It's interesting. But I like some of the others better. This is uh, Tandy's horse and foal, or, or horse, and horse and colt. I'll spit it out here in a minute. Make sure it's oriented right. Be nice if I put the pad underneath it. What you want to do is the same operation over and over again. So if you're going to use this stamp, leave the pad on there and just start bringing stuff over. These are some of the other stamps that you'll encounter. This is the horseshoe. This one's a discontinued item. The big star. On the 1,000 pound press, this isn't going to fit. But on this 2,000 pound press, you get enough room right here to make it fit. Uh, if you do buy the 1,000 pound press and this is too long, just cut it off. These things are cheap, so you don't have to worry about it. Simply get a hacksaw, cut the thing off, and you're in fine shape. The bear probably has the deepest detail, and it's the hardest one to, uh, to use. But this rubber pad shoves the leather back up inside these depressions and you can get a, a decent stamp out of it. This is the wolf. It's also very deep. And you still need this rubber pad to get uh, the detail out of this. Because if you don't, you have to use a thick piece of leather and you have to shove the stamp into the leather very, very deeply in order to get all this fine detail. If you want to have a handle, this is a uh, 3 8 inch carriage bolt. And this will screw down into this and cut its own threads. Or if you want to uh, get a uh, tap, you can cut threads into this, screw it down into it, and use that as a handle. Again, you don't need a handle with this, but if you want it, there it is. Makes it very easy. This is what Tandy usually supplies, and what it did is when I was trying to hold this 
uh, down on the leather itself. If you can see it from here, if I was trying to hold it down on the leather and then panned it with a hammer, I usually got my fingers pinched or this would bounce. And when the die bounces, what you end up with is a smeared image or a double image. Uh, sometimes the hammer would come down and I'd miss the top and be hitting it slightly over on the side so it would do that. So this eliminated all the problems. Uh, this is a really nice horse head, but it's a, again the problem was is you have this very, very deep detail. And this one's pretty interesting. In order to get the detail out of it, what I do, and this is a dry piece of leather, so I'm not going to try to stamp it. is I'll stamp without the pad, create an outline, and then go back, reset the stamp. But I'm not going to pull it down to create the pressure. But when I do pull it down, what happens is now I have a good outline. And then when I pull down on this, this rubber pad shoves up into the impression and creates a uh, all this detail that they did with the bridle and the eyes and the nose and the ears and the neck shapes and everything. And that's about the only way that you can get all the detail out of this stamp. It's also discontinued. Probably because nobody could use it. A lot of these stamps won't work very well unless you have this rubber pad. The rubber pad decreases the amount of strength that you have to use to pull down. And when, doing, when you are doing letters, what I do is I set the handle halfway. And it's got a little locking screw over here on the side of it. That was screwed all the way out. And this prevents me from putting a lot of force on that. If I push too hard on this die, what will happen is the letter itself will be shoved completely through the leather. You'll hear this little ripping, cracking noise and you'll be picking out leather out of the uh, indentations here and that's no fun. And just like all the others, you blacken the top of it so that you can rapidly orient it and bring the press down on it. Probably the worst mistake is to think you haven't done anything. If you're accustomed to a hammer you're going, to, you're going to want to pull the handle down several times or you're going to want to pull down on it really hard. And what this rubber pad does is it greatly decreases the amount of force necessary to operate this press and stamp something. And this uh, pad is about a year old now. And so uh, it's still going. 